you're probably familiar with the black and white to color method. It's very popular, but is it really effective? Hey, what's up y'all? This is the Art Mentor. My name is Sean and welcome back. So today I'm gonna give my evaluation of this process from black and white to color so that you have some tips and advice on how you should color your artworks and how to start digitally painting in color so that you know the pros and cons of this and you can make your own decision as will I. So let's start. So the basis of this is very simple. Basically, what you're gonna see in my layer hierarchy over here is that I have an overall grayscale version of this character, and then there is an entirely separate layer here with the blending mode switched to color. Um, and just to show you how horrendous this looks like, this is what it looks like, oh God, look at that, on normal. When you switch the blending mode in Photoshop or whatever digital art program y'all are using, into color, what it does is it's supposed to adapt whatever color into the grayscale valued version of whatever artwork that you currently have. So you see this in effect right here as I turn this on and off and I toggle it. And just to contain all that too, you'll notice that I do have a layer mask on here. And again, every program has some version of this. It might be called something different depending on what y'all are using. Now, the way that you adjust set values and color in this process is pretty simple in theory. So all you need to do is go ahead and select the original layer. And I typically would turn off the color layer as well when I'm doing this. So here you can see I have my basic value layer selected on here. And I'm gonna make a new layer just to make sure this isn't gonna look horrendous. So what I would do is I would go ahead and select the lightest value because I'm noticing, I think her face is really dark here. And I'm just gonna set my blending mode on this one to lighten so it'll soften up some of the features. I'm gonna go ahead and take a soft round brush on this too. And I'm gonna darken up a couple spots too. So this time I'm gonna switch my blending mode here to darken. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my darker values. I could also set this blending mode to multiply by the way. And let's say I wanna darken up a little bit more of this side of the neck. And I wanna darken up a little bit more underneath here, as well as right there underneath the nose where she's not gonna be catching some light in that side of the nose. So now when I go ahead and I put my color back on, the color is supposed to adapt to that. So just to show you, I'm gonna turn off those two layers I made right there. So you can see how much lighter her face has gotten from me doing this and where her face has gotten darker as well as I'm just shifting these layers, I'm turning them on and off. You can see how this is going again. There's everything I just did off and here it is on again. Now, the whole reason that I started doing this as most digital artists do, especially when they're first starting out is because I got sucked in by this. This seems like such a great amendable process and it seems like this would be a really easy transition for those of us that are coming from traditional art into digital art because it's a nice alternative first off to using color and also it seems like it's a very controllable method which I really understood. So it makes total sense that this would feel very comfortable, would feel very natural for artists. However though, then I put it into practice and I started to see this. Now let's take a look at what's gonna happen exactly when you go ahead and you try and color anything in grayscale so just to show you this in process, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna be creating separate layers with the most popular blending modes that I see this done with. I find that this typically works best with the layer blending mode and not the brush blending mode. All right, so let's try color first. Like I just showed you, I did it all in my previous artwork. So right here, it's a little strange to me that something that's so dark would be exactly where the highest saturation point would be. That's a little strange to me. So here's another color mode. Again, let's try blue here. When we go down to the uh, lightest version of this, it all of a sudden starts to become incredibly more saturated and much, much brighter than that. That's kind of weird with that, right? Now let's try it with this kind of orangey mustardy yellow. Let's see what happens here. Now overall with this one, it's not bad, but again, it's lightening up and it's more saturating it. So if I want a more desaturated color, it's not giving that to me either. Um, and then also, when we start to go all the way over here, uh, that's again where it starts to become most accurate to its color, which is kind of strange because when I look at this saturation point, its value is not the same. It's very strange. Next, let's do this exact same color next to it and let's try overlay. Look at the difference between what overlay has done and what has been done right next to it. This is this is very odd, isn't it, right? Like, how do we even get here? I don't understand. So next, let's try screen blending mode. What a massive difference between to the left over here and to the right. Like, how do we get here? I mean, this to screen totally washes it out. 
And now lastly, let's check out what color burn is gonna do to this top right one. Now what you can see this has done is it's completely annihilated all of my lighter values in favor of darker values, which is very strange. So I started to notice these effects. And then I started to feel not right about this entire process. And then this happened, y'all. Overall with this, y'all, I felt really stifled by the process. Let's go ahead and zoom into this crystal here that's gonna really nicely exemplify this. So one aspect of this process that I really don't like is the fact that when you look at all of this here, and you especially look at this crystal to see this, it has this really chalky effect where you have to pretty much use the soft round brush in order to get this result. And it just kind of washes everything out. And I don't like that. I don't like the fact that I don't have precise edge control over it. Another issue, and it seems like nitpicky here, right? But one thing I don't like is that I now have to select multiple layers. So just to show you here, if I wanted to resize the butterfly, it's a pain that I have to match up and select multiple layers. One other really massive issue I don't like about this and the need for so many different layers just to execute, honestly, an easier process through just straight coloring is that my file size grew enormously. As you can see from this singular document, this is over a gigabyte. It's uh, over 1.1 gigabytes. Um, and that's just because I have like 10 to 15 extra layers just for coloring purposes that I could have just put on a single layer. So now let's go ahead and let's use one of my most recent illustrations here as an example of how this could look and how it would run if I were to go ahead and use this black and white to color process. And let's be horrified together at this result. So here I've gone ahead, I've just flattened the entire image and then I grayscaled it right here. So you can see I have a pretty nice value structure. So let's specifically uh, focus in on this little lady down here while I'm doing this and I created a separate layer. I've gone ahead and switched that layer to color because that seemed to, from our previous example, exemplify the best results. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick the exact color that I chose down here. So I'm gonna choose this color, and then I'm going to apply that onto this new color layer. And let's just see what happens here. So look at, whoa, what is happening here? Oh my God, this poor girl, what happened? She's a lobster, this girl's been out in the sun too long, she forgot her stump bum, I guess, that day, huh? So obviously that's one pass, so let, let's see what's gonna happen if I were to, let's, let's make another color layer, and uh, let's go ahead and select another version of this right here too. So let's say I wanna go ahead, I wanna get this more desaturated color that's gonna happen here. Let's grayscale that back down here. And let's go ahead and try and try and put this one in here. What I don't like about this that's happening right now that you can see is that it's really graying out a lot of this color here. So what I really want you all to see and understand here as I'm gonna be putting in, this is literally the exact same effect that I have underneath and it just doesn't match the value and the saturation point of any of these. Overall, you can see how inaccurate this is just as I'm turning this on and off. And again, all I did was add in three colors, but I want you to notice all three colors are completely different than what the original was. So what's my verdict on this? Let me give you my overall opinion about should this be used or should this not be used at all? Here we go. Now, overall, my verdict is pretty simple and it starts with you because it depends on the user. It depends on your style, your aesthetics, and what kind of stuff that you like to do. And I don't wanna take that away from anybody, and I'm certainly not gonna say as a just big blanket statement that this sucks. I'm just gonna say, for me personally, I don't like it at all. What I don't like is that I don't have direct control. It's not repeatable, it's not predictable. And what I can best boil this down to, even for professionals that utilize this process on a daily basis and produce outstanding looking work, they still exemplify a lot of the issues that I previously discussed. Like it has really a chalky looking effect. Um, and at best they're utilizing what I can best describe as experimental intuition. They have to produce a lot of different layers and layer different effects together. And for me personally, I just feel like it's unnecessary. I think to myself, hey, why wouldn't you just color it instead and have direct control over it? If you're afraid of what that's gonna look like, it's really simple, just duplicate your layer. And if it looks like crap, just get rid of it and try it again. That way you have, yes, direct control and you can actually make precise color selections and you can actually produce things that are gonna look really awesome for you in your artwork. So my personal recommendation for you would be this. If you are just starting out with digital art, I would recommend that maybe you perhaps try this out and see if it's gonna adapt and work for you in your process. But in the long run, I would very much recommend that you would invest in yourself to learn color theory, to learn this application, and to learn how this is going to benefit you 
long term just to learn how to paint with straight color instead of switching from black and white into color through different blending modes and options. Overall, it's your choice, but personally me, I'm out. But hey, if you want to also learn how to be a better digital artist and create better artwork and get commissions on your art, make sure you watch the rest of these videos right here.